Hi everybody, it's the bloody news. I'm Andy Murray. Hey. And, and I'm Adam Nicholas from What Culture. Here to bring you all of today's news on a day after the maddest pile of hot BS you've ever seen. But we'll get to all that in just a second. We have who lost their eye in the eye for an eye match between Rey Mysterio and I'm just going to call him Chris Jericho there and <laughs> Seth Rollins. We also. Just jumping ahead a couple of stories there. We also have, did Crown Jewel concerns result in some April releases for a couple of WWE wrestlers? And speaking of Chris Jericho, he's been on Twitter asking WWE to hire his old pal. What you got, Andy Murray? Uh, I'm going to tell you all about Sister Abigail. She's back in Alexa Bliss form uh, in the main event of the Extreme Rules horror show end of the line roadblock. Um, <laughs> there were also three title changes sort of at the pay-per-view last night and on top of all that I'm going to tell you about the new Impact Wrestling champion who is working without a contract. Now before we dive into this I mean it probably goes without saying but this is a very spoiler heavy show so please if you haven't watched Extreme Rules yet if you don't want to be spoiled on that although I uh, don't know how much you're missing uh, you might want to come back later on once you've watched the pay-per-view, read the results, watch Simon Miller's ups and downs instead of watching the pay-per-view, which is what a lot of people do. Just letting you know, fair warning, this is the news. Firing straight in. Sister Abigail, she's back, sort of. Alexa Bliss is to her now. Um, <laughs> so the main event of, of the horror show at Extreme Rules Roadblock, end of the line, Great Balls of Extreme, was uh, br the Braun Strowman Bray Wyatt street fight. Street fight? Swamp fight? <laughs> This is going really well today. Um, hey, speaking of horror shows, this is the Here news. we are, baby. Uh, so yeah, the Swamp Fight was the main event. There was all kinds of callbacks to their shared history and their unique histories and stuff. Bray Wyatt wearing a Hawaiian shirt because if you don't know, he used to wear Hawaiian shirts back in the day. Braun Strowman getting attacked by a version of him in a black mask because he used to wear a black mask when he was in the Wyatt family. All kinds of callbacks. The biggest and most talked about one, probably for, was the Sister Abigail thing. So Braun Strowman's like dazed around a campfire. He set someone on fire, uh, <laughs> reasons. Uh, and then this mysterious figure appears in the distance and the smoke and horror stuff and spooky things are going on. It's Sister Abigail. Uh, she pulls back her robe. It's Alexa Bliss playing Sister Abigail. So not only is it calling back to Sister Abigail, it's calling back to the Mixed Match Challenge. Uh, team Little Big from back in the day. There was some words and stuff. Uh <laughs> I should point out as well, Andy, just before you go any further, that when she pulled back her robe for all you horrible people at home, it was the veil over her head as opposed to any other part of the road that you're getting weirded out about. Yeah, you silly sausages. Uh, there was all <laughs> kinds of stuff going on. Uh, she spoke about how she knew Strowman always wanted to be with her, and this led to Braun kind of approaching the figure and getting jumped, of course, by the Bray Wyatt. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's a thing that happened. Sister Abigail is back on the scene, crispy and clean. Um, this is the first time we've seen like a proper Sister Abigail character, I think, since Bray Wyatt was dressing up as her <laughs> a few years ago when he was going to wrestle Finn Balor in Sister Abigail garb but it got cancelled because he had a virus or a sniffle or whatever. This was, a, this was not a comeback I expected, Adam Nicholas, but what do you reckon? I mean, given the fact we were heading into the swamp between two lads who like a bit of swamp, <laughs> it, it was undoubtedly they were going to have some way, shape or form that was going to be a Sister Abigail reference. Do I think they should have even remotely gone back near Sister Abigail? No, I do not. I think we were all better off without. We all still got the scars of Finn Balor staring up at that big screen. <laughs> to see the, the veil over Bray's face was wonderful stuff. But yes, Alexa, I did, I did, I will say, I did like the at least references to um, Alexa and Braun's shared history. That was kind of cute, I guess, in a certain yeah. way, and putting her into that Sister Abigail thing. This was always going to be weird, wasn't it? The Bray was always going to come up with some weird stuff to put Braun through. Not to mention the fact he came... Did he not come like toe to toe with himself at one point? Yeah, he got, um, <laughs> he got attacked by the former version of himself, which is yeah. like symbolism and stuff. <laughs> I'm sure there will be think pieces across the internet unpacking mm. that level of genius later today. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, but yes, Alexa Bliss, Sister Abigail, Blister Abigail, no! Andy Murray, hey, hey. Well, this match you can was take that one certainly home. a blister on oh. the pay-per-view, so. <laughs> well, speaking of blisters on pay-per-views, Andy Murray, 
We didn't get a blister, but we did get someone who lost an eyeball, which is always quite fun when you're trying to wrestle another guy. We all were curious to see how this match was going to go because WWE had promised us an eye for an eye match. Rey Mysterio versus Seth Rollins. Well, guess what? Seth Rollins has still got two eyes because Rey Mysterio has only got one, even though technically he still already only had one before. The Let's dive into this because Rey Mysterio was the loser of a match that he chose, which is <laughs> his stipulation, the eye for eye match. But unfortunately, Seth Rollins got the win after many attempts, and I mean many various different attempts, of trying to put each other's eyes out, sometimes with tools, sometimes with kendo sticks on turnbuckles and all sorts. Eventually, Seth just went back the stairs. He went yeah. back the old faithful, got the stairs, pulled off the little patch that's over Rey Mysterio's eye, and forced it on to the steps once more. Now, what did we get to see? We were expecting CGI, we'd been promised all sorts. We sort of got it. I mean, it was more clarified by Samoa, Samoa Joe saying, it's out, <laughs> his eyes out. Yeah. Uh, just for everybody at home who doesn't know, that's it, that's his eyes out now. Um, there was a quick glimpse of the side of it. We kind of got a golf ball looking thing that was sort of just through the fingers. It kind of, it was literally about a second. But after that, we got nothing else. Although we did get Seth Rollins, who couldn't uh, stand the sight of his own handiwork, so he just was sick everywhere <laughs> over on the side because it's an Extreme Rules Horror Show, everybody. <laughs> Andy Murray, your thoughts on the interesting take on an eye for an eye match. Yeah, they're very high on people throwing up on air at the moment, aren't they? They had Robert yeah. Stone the other week as well. This, the, uh, the thing about this was, right, the match up until the finish was like earnestly yeah. great. Like it was really uh -huh. good. They did a really good job of hammering home how heavy the stakes are and like how personal and how much they hated each other. And it felt like life or death, but it was really well done. Yeah. I just wanted it to be dumber, though. Like, <laughs> yeah, I didn't want yeah, it yeah. to be good. I wanted it to be a train wreck. Um, that's not necessarily a complaint. It's just me being a bell wife. But um, I wanted, like, a, a, we spoke about this before we went on the air, about, like, a meatball swinging around yeah. from an eye socket or whatever. It just... I, I, I would have enjoyed, like, the eye still, like, looking left and right <laughs> as it was, like, hanging out of his face <laughs> or something. Obviously, the PG company, they can't yeah. do that. But one thing, in case anybody at home is worried about Rey Mysterio, let me completely quell your fears because WWE very kindly have given us a medical update from their medical professionals. They've said that after the sickening conclusion of the eye for an eye match, Charlie Caruso has provided an update on the condition of Rey Mysterio. Mysterio was rushed to that local medical facility that everyone goes to. El Paramedico is probably back in business over there and he says he's been to, to be treated for a potential global luxation or globe luxation even. <laughs> medical experts were optimistic that if that optic nerve is not severed and there's not too much strain on the blood vessels, lots of information here for a quick update. Uh, the nerves that connect his eye to the rest of his head, there's a chance that Mysterio might just maintain his vision <laughs> in an eye that he was apparently already blinded. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I will leave that to whoever the medical experts out there. I'm not going to debate this. I don't have a medical degree and there's people smarter than me who seem to know the truth. Never mind having stakes in matches, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about title changes. There were sort of three of them last night, and I say sort of because there's a caveat to all of this, but the one we can rely on, the one we, that we can trust 100% is that the SmackDown Tag Team Championships changed hands. Opening match on the main card, Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro defeating Kofi Kingston and Big E of the New Day, obviously. Uh, Kofi got powerbombed through a table. Good match, good way to start the show. Uh, like, just nothing, nothing to complain about. It was just really good. Um, the second title change of the night was something. Um, we were supposed to get MVP versus Apollo Crews, but we found out that Apollo Crews is too injured from the beatdown that Bobby Lashley and MVP put on him the other week. He wasn't there, so MVP, who is apparently now an authority figure, just said, hey, so yeah, I'm the champion now. Uh, <laughs> I, have, I have made this decision. I am the general manager. And um, see you later, Apollo Crews. Um, the second <laughs> weird title defense of the night was a fantastic match between Sasha Banks and Asuka until the finish, which was Asuka accidentally hit the referee with the mist. Uh, Bailey like, hit her with the belt. Uh, she then decided to just take the referee's shirt and count the pin <laughs> <laughs> and decide that Sasha Banks is the Raw Women's Champion. It's just, it's so weird. Ah. It's so strange. Um, 
kind of similar to the MVP situation. It's a wrestler going, yes, I am Vince McMahon. I make these decisions. Now, we should note, however, the WWE on their website have not updated the Raw Women's Champion and United States mm -hmm. Champion to reflect this. The only one that's being recognized at the moment is Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro. So we'll probably get some kind of uh, developments, maybe on tonight's Raw, whatever, whatever. Either way, just really weird seeing <laughs> two of these things going down on the same show. What were they doing? I don't know. I, I'll be honest. Look, this is the new way in WWE. Why would you ever scratch and claw singles match after singles match, all this sort of thing? Why bother? Just book yourself into the match and then just declare yourself the winner. That's, that's the way to do it for me. I'm a big fan of this. If this is going to be the new approach to wrestling, <laughs> the hot shotting of some of the greatest titles in the world, fast, furious, you never know who's going to crop up and take those belts. Such a shame, actually, because I will say the GMVP of the night turning up and just deciding that he is the one who's going to get the new US title. I guess that kind of fits the sort of stupid stuff they have been doing, and he's basically been arrogantly saying that he's the champ anyway. I'm sure we'll get some comeuppance there. The Bailey and Sasha and Asuka thing is, it's a shame, because as you say, it was a great match. It was a really good match up until the point where it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> and then things kind of just yeah. went a bit wild. And as Bailey was dragging that referee shape off the ref, I just <laughs> cannot put into words what was going on there. But hey, listen, those, those guys are money on TV at the minute, so I guess they can get away with it for now. That's probably what they figured. Yeah, let's, let's see what the follow-up is to all this crazy nonsense. <laughs> Indeed. But speaking about money, Andy Murray, let's talk a bit about Crown Jewel, shall we? Because there's been a little report here from Dave Meltzer of Wrestling Observer Radio basically suggesting something to do with the fact that we there might be a connection between some of the wrestlers who were released and that disastrous thing that happened in, in uh, Saudi Arabia when for Crown Jewel when the plane was essentially held hostage and they weren't allowed to leave the country. So lots of different things going on here, but Meltzer basically says, coming from his report, saying that it suggests that those who actually complained publicly regarding this have been retroactively punished, potentially through being released. Now, the names he mentioned here, he says, another thing was the guys who had given the company bad publicity over Saudi Arabia, which was Rusev, Carl Anderson, and Joe Hennig, obviously Curtis Axel, they're the guys who essentially were on that big list that were, of releases that happened on uh, Black Friday, on April the 15th. So, I'm not, obviously this is just Melter. we should point that out, Melter. just suggesting that may well be the case, and obviously it's up for you to interpret that however you wish, but interesting to see that that might be the case, Andy Murray, because it seems like WWE would probably want to move away from any negativity surrounding that and keep everything hush-hush. But of course, we did get that, the court case, where someone went into quite a lot of detail yeah. regarding what happened, and it did not sound pretty at all. Yeah, WWE have always like really strongly denied all of this stuff, but of course they have. You know, it's bad publicity, and like Jerry McDevitt, their lawyer, is one of the best spin doctors in the business, always has been. Um, so it, it's just, it's kind of interesting to me that this incident that went down like eight months ago is still coming into play and still circulating in reports and so forth because, you know, it's not something that can just be brushed away and, and forgotten about and so forth. Uh, the company may try that, but it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. I can absolutely see that. Like if they feel that like one of their independent contractors has spoken out of turn when it comes to cut costs, they might well look at them and go, hey, yeah, screw that guy. Like, you know, wrestler A didn't do that, so we'll keep him. But wrestler B is a bastard. So off you go. It's uh, definitely something that I can see them doing as part of their decision making process, for sure. It seems it seems like the kind of mentality they would have, wouldn't it? But it's, it's weird that all of this comes directly from like Vince and um, Vince Salman falling out essentially and all of the fallout from two very powerful men disagreeing over money and then all these guys and gals suffered as a result, which is just terrifying yeah. when you think about it. But you hope it's not connected, but then again, the signs kind of point in that direction. Yeah, man. Right? Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of smoke to this fire. Indeed. Um, let's pivot over to Impact real quick. Uh, if you watch Slammiversary at the weekend, it was a good show. Uh, highlighted, I think a lot of people would agree, by a fantastic knockouts title match between Jordan Grace and Deonna Perrazzo. <laughs> Deonna Perrazzo won that match, but we got mm -hmm. a new report here from Fightful Select stating that she is still working on a pay-per-appearance deal. She's not under written contract, but she's the, the knockouts champion. That's an interesting little snippet. Impact giving one of their top belts to somebody who is, you know, not properly affiliated with the group, I guess. Now, you know, you got to imagine there's an element of trust there, right? I don't think Deonna Perrazzo is going to go, hey, Impact, screw you, I'm taking your belt to AEW or wherever else. Um, 
But it's still an interesting little nugget. There's no word on whether or not the two parties are in discussion over a permanent deal. However, uh, Perazzo has been used really strongly there. She was let go as part of the releases in April. She didn't have a non-compete like the other people because she showed up in Impact in June uh, a lot earlier than a lot of people who were released at the same time. She's been booked really strongly, immediately put into that Jordan Grace feud. Um, winning the belt was a really great way to keep that going. It was a fantastic match. Like, if you've not seen the match, it's really worth checking out. One of the better impact matches I've seen over the past couple of years, I think. It was just tremendous, realistic, snug, hard-hitting stuff. Be interesting to see what happens next for Perazzo, of course. Freelancer, she can hold the belt for long, she can have a long reign, what kind of matches is she going to have? Fancy maybe a rematch with Grace somewhere down the line, which sounds great, but an uh, interesting piece of information nonetheless. Absolutely, and it's, do you know, it is nice to see Perazzo actually getting to leave WWE and go and be presented the way that arguably she maybe should have been because every time she was wrestling, whether it was in NXT or on the main roster, she just did not get a good run at it. Yes. She did get to go and feature in a couple of matches with some of the higher higher up talent, I guess you want to call it, on either show. But they never really put any stock in that, which is a shame, because I do think that was something there. But hopefully she can find it in uh, Impact, and obviously winning the belt is a great way to start. And fair play to just turn up and beating Jordan Grace, because Grace has got a hell of a lot of heft in that division. Yeah. She's been considered to be the top dog for quite a while. Yeah, now. absolutely. But speaking of top dogs, I guess, <laughs> let's talk about Chris Jericho. That'll do, won't it? What have I become Release the now that I've betrayed? Anyway, yes, Chris Jericho has been at it again on Twitter. Now, if you were watching closely over the weekend, you will have seen that Lance Storm, his friend and former thrill seeker, tag partner, I guess if you want to call him, those two had a bit of an interaction technically. Lance basically sent out a tweet regarding the fact that he has recently and officially become unemployed, I guess, for the first time. He basically said, for what it's worth, I am now officially unemployed. First time since I left SMW in November 1994. Hashtag future endeavor. So he may have lost his job, but he hasn't lost his sense of humor. And Lance Storm, of course, incredibly talented guy across the board, whether it's in ring or out of ring. But Chris Jericho decided to weigh in on this. Now, as a man who works for a company, who are a new company, who obviously have their own thing going on, and are giving opportunities around, maybe you're thinking Chris Jericho was tweeting out, hey, why don't we get you over here in AEW, let's get you a job. But no, that wasn't the direction Chris Jericho decided to go down this weekend. And I will correct this once I've basically referred you to this tweet. This is the tweet as it stands. So it says, in this biz, that's a hell of a run. Now, at WWE, needs to pull their heads out of their collective asses and rehire you. Hashtag Lance is a genius. Now, this tweet does come with a caveat because despite the fact Jericho is offering up somebody to a company he doesn't even work for at this point, there was a previous tweet, the exact same tweet before this, only it got deleted because he had also added his old dad, Vince McMahon, <laughs> and I guess maybe decided after waking up and realizing this was a mistake, decided to delete the tweet and just leave it as it was. Andy Murray, this is fascinating to me because Lance Storm genuinely would have quite a lot to offer, I would imagine. Maybe even quite a lot to offer to AEW. And yet, if you're Lance, if you're Lance Storm and you're sitting there thinking, why are you sending me to do it to me? Why aren't you? I thought we were buddies. <laughs> Chris Jericho necking a bottle of bubbly and getting on Twitter is one of my favourite things at the moment. It is. Um, he's having a rare old time and I've no doubt that this annoyed people, which is probably what he was trying to do. That's probably what he was going for. Um, poor Lance Storm. Lance Storm shut his wrestling school. He closed down his yeah. wrestling school to go and work for WWE and now they've let him go. He's a guy who you only really hear good things about behind the scenes, and I hope that he lands on his feet. I'm sure he will, uh, whether that's in WWE again, whether it's in AEW, where maybe he reopens the school, who knows. But this was Jer Jericho's hammered. I, I kind of love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Undoubtedly, I feel like the timing of the tweets feels like that was, you know, the wee hours perhaps of just, oh, I'm just going to send some madness out on Twitter for a little bit. Yeah, time. he's had a drink and he's having a bit of fun. <laughs> he's had a bit of the bubbly. Let's hit our Twitter questions for the day. The first one comes from Lyndon Stewart, who asks, So is Braun Strowman dead, lol? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think that was the takeaway I got from it, is that Braun is now, has passed over into the another plane and we must... Mourn Braun. Mourn Braun. <laughs> Hashtag Mourn Braun. Get that tweet out there. 
Uh, hopefully he's, he's in a better place now. Yeah, rest in peace to the big man. Uh, drowned at the end of that of that swamp fight, of course. I am choosing to believe that that wasn't a regular swamp. It was, in fact, the Lake of Reincarnation, and that he is going to show up on this week's episode of SmackDown, reincarnated as Alexa Bliss. Um, <laughs> the, the next uh, question here comes from Antonio Pizza, who asks... Um, <laughs> Uh, I can't stop laughing about the goddamn yeah, is he dead yeah. lol That's it. is he dead lol thank you Lyndon Stewart for the best question of the year but Antonio's question Indeed. here asks ended about sorry what was, what was his name uh, Antonio Pizza asks ah, just, I just uh, sure. Extreme Rules uh, ended 30 minutes early since Cruz and Lashley and Hardy and Sheamus were cancelled um, mm. since there are no fans or no tickets is this the way to go for pay-per-views in the empty arena era Versus having booked last minute filler matches. So trimming down the card, maybe cancelling things mm. last minute. Is this the future? Is this the way to go? I would keep the shows streamlined the way they are. I think it works. I think that that two hour, two and a half hour format, they've kept that with NXT. That seems to work. I like it. Are they going to do it? Absolutely not. As soon as they get a chance to bring audiences back in, I'm sure they'll extend it to five hour pay-per-views for all those hours that you missed out on. <laughs> Back in the day, Andy Murray, it must be the same for you. Sure. Is Braun Strowman dead, lol? <laughs> <laughs> is Braun Strowman dead, lol? Um, yeah, I think this is the way, like, for sure. Um, mm. Shorter shows are a lot easier to handle. Um, well, you know, I wasn't really at, at all disappointed when Sheamus versus uh, Jeff Hardy got caught. Not because I didn't think it would be fun or whatever. It's just a relief. Um, yeah. Empty yeah. arena mm -hmm. wrestling is a lot harder to consume when it doesn't have the roar of the crowd as the old NXT theme would say yeah. if it was a person um but yes i agree 100 percent um final question here comes from john shoemaker jr who asks with the train wreck that extreme that was extreme rules uh do you think it's time for wwe to reevaluate the way they run their storylines and stop trying to relive the attitude era in a pg fashion eyeballs eyeballs i think at this point <laughs> what the uh, empty arena era has proven is that and I've said this many times on different podcasts, stuff. I don't think anything that's happening right now, long term, matters. Genuinely, I don't think any of the champions matter. I don't think any of the the oh, there's, there's people who have managed to do really well in this era. Asuka, <laughs> Sasha Banks, Bailey, they have managed to succeed. But genuinely, if you think right now that any of this is going to be sort of held long term, you need to rethink that because they are just going from show to show to keep the flashy things in front of your eyes until they can get those crowds back. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, there is a wider conversation to be had there about WWE mm. promising levels of violence that their rating and their yeah. sponsors uh, mean they can't, you know, reasonably deliver. But we've also known this is the, the way of WWE for quite a while. So, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, uh, to answer your question, John, I think so. Yes, I do, I do kind of wish they would stop going, hey, we're going to cut a head off on pay-per-view and then be like, <laughs> yeah. no, we're not because we're PG. Um, it's kind of a silly thing that they just do. But like Adam Nicholas said at the end of the day, uh, this is the weirdest filler holding circle period of all time. So let's just enjoy the ride while we've got it. Uh, and finally, here's Kane, uh, but it's a dog. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> here's a dog. Uh, yeah, it's it's Kane, but it's a dog. Uh, I've never seen this before uh, until today. But there is, it. Yep, there's another dog with him, looking like yep, good stuff. Andy Murray, don't 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 do a disservice to the real performers who had to do this. Fred and Hush, <laughs> of course, who are the two dogs you will see on screen. <laughs> Who are dressed? Well, one of them's dressed as Kane, a K9. Oh Murray. Jesus! A, jo a joke which you've had to suffer through twice now. Once in the prep and once at the end of the twice show. Twice in hey, one day, baby. Take that one to the bank. Woof woof. Enjoy. Hooch, of course, is named after his favourite beverage <laughs> as well. Uh, it's just came with a dog mask. Look, if you don't like a, a dog in a cane mask, you're what, what? What do you like? What do you enjoy? What do you like in let life? Let us know in the comments down below. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let us know what dogs you want to see in masks next. Uh, good, <laughs> right, we're going to stop now because, yep. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Mm. Uh, you can do podcasts and Twitter and stuff and ask us questions at what culture WWE is all very much appreciated. We have been the train wreck boys. You can catch Adam Nicholas on Twitter at... At it's Adam Nicholas, and can I just say I thoroughly enjoy it when Andy Murray has to play the Adam Wilborn role. It is my personal favourite, and you can find him on Twitter. Find me on Twitter at Andy H Murray. The H stands for I hope your eyeballs okay, Ray. You <laughs> silly. 
Pirate? <laughs> <laughs> Shut it down. Shut it down. God. Bye, everyone. Go away.